Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ruby basic series. Today we're going to be taking a look at some conditional statements. We covered these previously in the Boolean video, although that wasn't really the main focus. So today I want to take a look at some of the areas where you make a condition, which will then give you a Boolean. It will create a Boolean for you that you can then use. So to start, let's imagine a magical mystery country where the legal driving age is 18. This is kind of the cliche thing you do when you like look at the, um, the conditional ideas. So let's say in this country, I'm using the, uh, the, uh, I'm using the uh, hashtag or the pound or whatever you want to call it symbol to create a comment in this country, the legal driving age is 18. So we need to consider that. Let's start by giving ourselves our own age. I'm going to say my age as a variable name is equal to 20. So I am 20 years old. I'll just say that right here. I am 20 years old is what I'm saying right here. So now let's let's check if I can drive. So we'll say if I can drive print, I can drive. If I can't drive, I want to print, I can't drive. Okay. So this is our basic flow for this program that we're going to be creating here. So what do we want to do? All right. I know I'm 20 and I know that I need to be at least 18 years old. So if I am 18 or older, I can drive. So we'll say if my age, which remember is 20, if 20 is greater than or equal to 18, we want to print, I can drive, right? So let's come down here and let's say puts, I can drive. Okay, so that's our first condition. You'll see we indent this over in Ruby, it's two spaces or a tab. In other languages, this might be four spaces or a tab, whatever you decide to use. In this case, I'm going with two spaces because that's kind of what's just used generally. And then in the other case, so if my age was like, let's say four, right? I can't drive, I'm not old enough to drive. In that case, I need to print else, or I need to use an else block to print the other case, which is gonna be, I can't drive. And then we'll have the end here, because if we have an if statement, we need to also have an end statement down here so that the code knows where this stops. In another language, what you might do here is you might have like your braces, and if I hit enter, you would then have like your puts in here. You would then have your else right here. And then you would have your braces and then you would move this in here and then you wouldn't have an end. The idea here is that by having an end in something like Ruby, we can get rid of all of this weird brace stuff and instead just have something that looks a little bit more readable for a normal person instead of all of these, uh, these weirdos that do programming for a living that look at all those braces and think that's totally normal. But okay, let's change this to 20. So we'll make sure that we are old enough to drive, which means we should see I can drive if we run this in the terminal. To run it, we'll type RB and then the name of our file, which remember was main.rb. So we'll type .rb and then we can see I can drive. Let's change our age to four. And then let's go ahead and let's run this program again. And you already know what should be printed here, but let's just make sure we can see I can't drive. So that's one case. Now we need to check. Um, let's say that uh, we want to have another program here. Uh, that's like, uh, I need to be, um, let's say younger than, uh, I don't know, let's say I need to be younger than 25 uh, or let's say I need to be younger than 18 to go to uh, school, right? If I'm older than 18, for some reason, the school doesn't let me go there anymore. Uh, bad luck if you have a birthday that falls in the wrong month, I guess. <laughs> so we'll say if I'm younger than 18, print, I can go to school. Uh, and if I'm older than 18, print, I can't go to school. Of course, that's not how school works, but I, I'm struggling to come up with an example. So in this case, we actually want to make sure that someone is strictly younger than 18. So instead of doing this greater than or equal to 18, where you can be 18 years old, we want to make sure that someone is definitely younger than 18. Another way we could think of this, instead of just doing the age is less than 18, we could do less than or equal to 17 and say someone can be 17 or younger, 
which is not the same thing as strictly less than 18. Oh, I guess it is the same thing as strictly less than 18. So either this one or uh, let me just hit that come down here and do or we could do uh, we could do uh, if my age is less than or equal to 17. These are basically the same thing. So in this case, we want to put I can go I can go to school because I'm younger than 18. Otherwise, I can't go to school. So basically what we've established here is you can only drive if you can't go to school for some reason. So let's go ahead and let's try this. As a four-year-old, this should, oops, uh, let's just run this over here. As a four-year-old, it should say, I can't drive and I can go to school. We can see right here, I can't drive, I can go to school. So now let's take this and let's change this to like 20, let's do 25 and then let's run this again. And now we can see as a 25 year old, I can drive, but I can't go to school. So those are two of the options that you have here, or I guess four of the options. You can either have a greater than or a greater than or equals to, or you can have a less than or a less than or equals to operator. They'll work exactly like you would expect to in any type of like math language. Now let's do one more. Uh, let's say I need to be exactly uh, 18 to vote. Like we're only in this country, we only let literal 18 year olds vote. If you're any younger or any older, you don't get to vote. Uh, so let's say if my age is exactly equal to 18, then we'll say I can vote else we'll say I can't vote. So right now my age as a reminder is 25. And actually let's come up here right below my age and let's say puts, uh, I am my age years old. And this is how we can use a variable inside of our strings. We can use again that uh, that hashtag or that pound or I think it's like the octothorpe operator or symbol and then some braces, my age and then the closing braces. This will let you put the variable inside of a string. Every language has a weird quirk like this where you can put it in a string somehow and it always looks super ugly. This is how we can do it in Ruby. Let's go ahead and let's run this. So now we can see I am 25 years old. I can drive, I can't go to school, and I can't vote because I'm not exactly 18. If we change this to 18, and then we run this one more time, we can see I'm 18, which means I can drive, I can't go to school, and I can vote. Now, you may be wondering why we use double equals here. Well, this is why we do it. I don't know if Ruby's actually gonna let me do this, but in other languages, we strictly use the single equal symbol for assignment. It's the assignment operator. It's not the equality comparison operator. So what you're actually doing here is let's say you have this set to, I don't know, 16 again, right? Which means we can't drive, but we can go to school. What you're actually doing here is you're setting it to exactly equal to 16 or to 18 in this case. So if we can't drive, but we can go to school because we're 16, this in some languages would set it equal to 18, which means as a 16 year old, it would still say I can vote. Now, I don't know if this will work, so we'll go ahead and we'll try this. And we can see right here, uh, warning found literal equals in conditional should be double equals. So Ruby's helping you here, which is very nice. But we can see here, I am 16 years old, which means I can't drive and I can go to school, which makes sense. But right here we can see I can vote because we have this literal assignment operator here. So we actually need this to be the double equals uh, because now if it says I'm 16, we'll see that instead of saying I can vote, it'll say I can't vote because we're no longer setting it to 18. We're now comparing it to 18. So that's one of the gotchas you need to watch out for. Now, thankfully, Ruby here is very helpful, even tells you the line number. So we can see line 30. We found a literal equals. So we changed that to a double equals and now it's working as expected. So always uh, look at your errors. Don't be afraid of them. Read them. They won't always be super helpful, but sometimes they will literally tell you what the problem is. The, th the problem you'll run into is, and I still run into this as a professional developer, sometimes what it tells me is wrong is something that I don't personally understand. So sometimes the error makes sense if you know what it means, like in this case, literal equals. That makes sense because I'm telling you what it means. But without knowing that, uh, you don't really know what this part right here means with should be like the double equal symbol. You could just look at this and be like, I don't really know what this means. In this case, it's just telling you that it should literally be 
this symbol, which if you don't know this is a symbol, will mean nothing to you. So that's just something I want you to be aware of. But for now, I'm going to leave you with this because uh, having access to these conditionals actually allows us to do a lot of really fancy stuff, which we'll take a look at in a couple of the following videos. So for now, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.